NCW Life Channel Sports is proud to bring you the following presentation. He will take it down and he will take the lead. How about that? Seven. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Abby's Pizza, Biosports Physical Therapy, Clean Connection, Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mart, Together For You, and TC Slingers. Now let's go to the gym for live coverage of high school sports on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. To his own back, it's Jackson. Two point takedown and maybe some near fall points coming up for Brad. Wrestling fans and welcome to Eastmont High School. Eric Grandstrom here, Matt side as we get ready for the Wildcats and the Panthers and Big Nine wrestling action here tonight. We've got one ladies match and the rest will be all the guys here tonight. It's senior night for the Wildcats and it's the final match of the regular season for the Big Nine as they get ready for the district tournament coming up a couple of Saturdays from now at Davis High School. Wenatchee, Eastmont coming up next here on the NCW Life Channel. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab Tires. When the people you serve are your friends and family, you see the world a bit differently. You understand that your survival depends on the health and strength of your relationships. Your word is your reputation, and that doing the right thing is the only way of life that matters. At Confluence Health, we remain humble. Trust is a gift that is earned, a privilege, an honor. And we remain grateful for the trust you place in our hands. Our pre-match show continues here on the NCW Life Channel. Now talking with Carlos and Adami, the head coach for the Wenatchee Panthers. First of all, let's go back to last week in Sunnyside. What a match came down to what we'd hoped to be the final match of the night. You've got to be pretty proud of your guys. I am. They're, you know, they're, they're doing everything that I'm asking them to do, and they're really stepping up. You know, we're just, we talk about hitting levels and, and just keep climbing that, climbing that ladder, and we're doing a really good job at doing that, and I just hope it continues into the postseason. Well, and you asked some guys to drop some weight for that match last week. I see you still have some of those guys down a little bit. Yeah, we're trying to just, you know, be as competitive as we can. Uh, it's been a long time since uh, the Valley's had somebody that's been real competitive. And, and you know, it's just great to, to be able to contribute to um, the community and giving that back to them. So really happy that they're they're performing well and wrestling at a higher level. So how are you set for getting ready for districts here in a couple of Saturdays, or a couple of weekends from now uh, at Davis High School? Uh, just still shifting my line, line up a little bit, uh, trying to get people kind of where we think we're going to have the best results and so um, you know hope hopefully we make some good decisions as coaches you know you have to look at all the numbers games and where everybody might drop to or has the potential to and where we're going to get score the most points because um, again we have another gr great team and I think we can um, you know go out there and at least you know I think we're gunning for the top 10 again this year so um, hopefully we can make that happen well best of luck here tonight keep everybody healthy all right thank you all right there you go Carlos Adamy joining us here on the pregame show we'll come back and talk with an East Block coach it's not the head coach we'll tell you why coming up next on the NCW Life Channel. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? With today's home values, this is the perfect time to sell and make those dreams real. When you work with a world-class agent at Coldwell Banker, you benefit from trusted guidance in our revolutionary seller's assurance program to make your home sale more rewarding than ever. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. My car's making a funny noise. Not a problem. We'll take care of you. Global Car Care's technicians are ASE master techs and well-versed in the more refined methods of vehicular diagnostics. Number three piston and rings have a slight loss of compression, down to 108 pounds. Your transmission is slipping. You're going to need a service. Looks like you're all set. These guys? They're good. Oh, and your spare is flat. Global Car Care, Wenatchee's top shop. 
Our pre-match show continues here on the HCW Live Channel. Now talking with an assistant coach for the East Malt Wildcats. We've been hoping to talk to Hugh Chang tonight, but Hugh's got some medical issues, so Tyler McGee is stepping in tonight. And Tyler, I know we wish Hugh the speediest of recovery. Yeah, he's uh, feeling better, and so we're hoping to have him back for districts. Um, the kids really miss having him in the mat room, but um, he's doing better. So it's senior night tonight. You step in to fill that role as well, and you've got, what, five five seniors, I think you said? Five seniors. we got a good group of kids out there. So Talk about that, and as you come into this match here tonight against the Cross River rival, I mean, you don't have to pump the guys up too much. Yeah, no, they're, they're ready to go. Um, like I said, we've got a good group of kids. We've got the five seniors, and then we've also got uh, a young group of kids that are just real hard workers. I mean, this, this uh, mat room, we've been working pretty hard this year. Uh, we've got some sicknesses going on right now, so we don't have the full lineup, which is unfortunate, but we're looking towards districts and trying to get them all healthy for districts and hoping to have some tough matches today. They uh, did the draw. It's going to start at 113 pounds. What should fans that are watching tonight be on the lookout for as far as individual matches here tonight? Yeah, so uh, I think the 195-pound match with uh, Evan and Ricky is going to be a good one. Um, they're both kind of gunning for each other and kind of top at the weight class in, in the division in our district. And then also the 106 pound, the last match, that one's going to be pretty tough. I think Jake and uh, Ryder have been going back and forth, um, both sharing some wins and losses. And so today's going to be a good match. Hopefully they come out and wrestle tough and give a good show. Well, best of luck. Keep everybody healthy. Yes, thank you. There you go. Tyler McGee joining us here on the pre-match show. We'll come back with the face-off and the bout and our match tonight here on the NCW Life Channel right after this. Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. It's Wake Up in Anchee Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Life Channel. You don't have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine-in style at Highlander Bar & Grill, located in East Wenatchee. Highlander Golf Course has added two state-of-the-art full swing simulators. Food and drink service is available from our full service bar and grill, offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Indoor and outdoor seating available. Call Shalane, our on-site coordinator, to schedule your special event. Welcome back once again here to East Bond High School. We're here just in time to capture the senior night here for some few seniors celebrating their uh, final match here on the home map. We're going to turn it over to the uh, public address announcer, Matt Fraser. Welcome Wildcat sports fans and family to Eastmont High School. Tonight the Eastmont Wildcats host the Panthers from Wenatchee and Columbia Basin Big Nine wrestling action. It's senior night tonight and at this time we'd like to direct your attention to the mat as we celebrate our senior wrestlers. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start with senior night, I talked with Coach Hugh Chang uh, just before the match, and he wanted to say how proud he is of his senior group. He wishes that he could be here tonight. He's unfortunately under the weather with some medical conditions, but he wanted to say that he loves each one of his seniors and to go Cats. All right, we're going to start off with senior Jonathan Cervantes. He's uh, accompanied by his dad, Augie, mom, Angelica, and his sister, Julie. I'm going to read their statements, so if it sounds like I love their parents, I do love some of their parents, but this is from Jonathan. He's been wrestling since he was eight years old. I'd like to thank his parents. His favorite memory of wrestling is from his freshman year because it was fun. He got into wrestling after he saw a flyer at school and wanted to try it out. And another reason is because his dad was a pretty good wrestler. I like wrestling because it's competitive, an independent sport, and facing an opponent alone on the mat presents a different set of difficulties. After graduation, he plans to get into stocks and maybe go on further in school. Wrestling has taught him respect, hard work, and dedication on and off the mat. All right, our next one is Caden Bremen. He's accompanied by his mom, Crystal, and his dad, Josh. He'd like to thank everyone who came to support him tonight. He'd also like to thank his mom and dad for supporting him and his decision since his first breath. He loves them dearly. 
This sport will always be a part of who he is, and he will never forget that. This sport is in my blood. I love you all. Thank you. Our next senior, Rudy Vivanco. Rudy's accompanied by Erica Mario Vivanco. Let's see, get to the next page. And Adrian, his brother. He's been wrestling since he was four years old and since his brother put him onto it. He'd like to thank his mom for bringing him into this world and giving him the opportunities and his brother for showing him how to wrestle and his dad for being there for him. His favorite memory is being able to just be here and wrestle. He likes wrestling because he doesn't have to depend on other people. After graduation, he plans to work on cars and own his own shop. Our next senior is Luke Kidrowski, parents John and Lisa Kidrowski. He's been wrestling for 12 years. He loves the sport from early Saturday mornings with his parents and his team to those hard practices. He has only his parents to thank for that. They made him join at five years old and supported him through the 12 years. He can't thank them enough for that. He says he doesn't say it enough, but thank you for the opportunity and support to wrestle. He loves his mom and dad and wants to thank this team for being a great last team. <laughs> Senior Spencer Housden, parents Michelle and Chris. This is his first year wrestling. He'd like to thank his parents for giving him many opportunities. His favorite memory is in his first tournament at Davis High School. He started wrestling because it looked like fun. He likes wrestling because it's physical and mentally challenging. After graduation, he will join the Army and pursue a career as a police officer. Wrestling has taught him that mentality is everything. <laughs> Senior Alina Brianna Kalunga is the daughter of Luz and Ricardo Kalunga. This is her first year wrestling, although she wishes she would have joined years ago. Currently, she is enrolled in the Running Start program at Wenatchee Valley College to pursue her goal of becoming a radiologic technologist. She also plans to study environmental sciences. Her passion is to protect and preserve the environment and advocate for animals. She wants to encourage others to do the same. She hopes to one day find ways to reduce fossil fuels and contribute to the global warming. That contribute to the global warming. Yes, don't contribute to it, Alina. She also plans to continue volunteering at Wenatchee Valley Humane Society to help animals. She's grateful that God's given her a loving family to support her goals and dreams. Our next senior is Mia Gonzalez, parents Desiree and Polo Gonzalez. She's been wrestling for four years and would like to thank Coach Chang, Shai Chang, and Coach Kit for always pushing her to do her best. She started wrestling her freshman year because she wanted to try something different and ended up loving the sport. She loves wrestling because it physically and mentally challenges her. After graduation, she plans to go to college to become a nurse. Wrestling has taught her a lot, but mostly to never give up and work through her problems. <laughs> Senior Destiny Burnett. She's accompanied by Kathy Alvarez, Vesuvio Alvarez, and her little brother, Ryder. This is her second year of wrestling. She's planning to go to Wenatchee Valley College after graduating from Eastmont High School. Learned a lot from wrestling and how to make more friends and getting out of her comfort zone. She started wrestling to try something new and found out she loves it. She wanted to thank her coaches for dealing with her and her family for supporting her through school and wrestling. Let's get one more big round of applause for all of our seniors tonight. There you go, senior night here at Eastbound High School. We have the head-to-head uh, -head matchups coming up, and we'll have wrestling straight ahead here right after this timeout. You've got a lot to do today. While you're out and about, remember to dispose of your unused medications safely and anonymously. It's a simple act that makes your home a safer place. Next time you're at the pharmacy, just place them in the drop box. To find a location, visit medproject.org. All right, welcome back here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to pass the microphone off to our public address announcer again, Matt Frazier. To give us our starting lineups brought to you by TC Slingers. TC Slingers, let them save you time, money, and labor with their conveyor application. Call for your free estimate today, 509-885-2269. TC Slingers of Wenatchee, your landscape 
uh, placement company. All right, back to Matt Frazier and our faceoff. We're just going to do the match, just the match first for the faceoff, and then I'm going to announce the girls once we start after the faceoff. Okay, our first faceoff here is going to be our two girls who are wrestling tonight for Wenatchee, Chloe Burr, and for Eastmont, Gloria Diaz. All right, the wrestlers will come out onto the mat for their faceoff and shake hands. We will announce the other girls uh, once the match starts. All right, for the boys, starting tonight at 113 pounds, for Wenatchee, we have D'Angelo Negrete, and for Eastmont, Kobe Cervantes. At 120 pounds, for Wenatchee, we have Jackson Glines, and for Eastmont, Rudy Vivanco. At 126 pounds for Wenatchee, Cannon Sanders will receive a forfeit. At 132 pounds for Wenatchee, Martin Soto will receive a forfeit. At 138 pounds for Wenatchee, Bryant Witherington will wrestle Keiston Hughes for Eastmont. At 145 pounds for Wenatchee, Frank Brandt for Eastmont, Caden Greenman. At 152 pounds for Wenatchee, Trenton Miller and for Eastmont, Nelson Nygaard. At 160 pounds for Wenatchee, Joe Skyleman receives a forfeit. At 170 pounds for Wenatchee, John Gutzweiler will wrestle Randy Binner from Eastmont. At 182 pounds, Luke Flugi from Wenatchee versus Alexis Sotelo from Eastmont. At 195 pounds from Wenatchee, Evan Burdan and from Eastmont, Ricky Kalunga. At 220 pounds for Wenatchee, Jack Flugi for Eastmont, Spencer Housden. And at 285 pounds for Wenatchee, Vincent Goforth. And for Eastmont, Luke Kiedrowski. There you go. There is, oh, you got one more. And our final match of the night will That's be at 106 it. pounds from Wenatchee, Ryder Whitley, and from Eastmont, Jake Schrader. That's right. We're starting at 113 pounds. We're finishing at 106 pounds as we go through the lineup. We've got the anthem. We'll take a break and come back. It's a wrestling action from Eastmont coming up here on the NCW Life Channel. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the Diagnostic Doctor from Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning. Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dick's, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing, and they service all major brands of HVAC units. Hi folks, welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. Go ahead and move this chase on the other side. Great, I want that one. I like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. you find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. The newest generation of GMC Sierra pickups offer the most advanced technology, the strongest selection of powertrain, and everything else you need to work hard, play hard, and explore the boundaries of the Wenatchee Valley and beyond. Take a look at the latest, most luxurious and durable trucks on the market. You will see why GMC is not your grandfather's pickup. You want to bet, kid?
All right, National Anthem taken care of. We're ready for wrestling here tonight on the NCW Life Channel. Thank you much for joining us. And again, our uh, lineups brought to you by TC Slingers. We will be back here at Eastmont tomorrow night for basketball between Wenatchee and Eastmont. So be sure and join us for that. The girls at 545, the boys at 730. Chloe Burr, Wenatchee will take on Gloria Diaz in our only official bout to the girls' side here tonight. So our official for this one is Todd Carter, and we're ready to wrestle on the NCW Life Channel. As it is Burr in the purple singlet for the Wenatchee Panthers and Diaz in the red singlet for Eastmont. And she quickly gets a takedown. And it looks like it might be an injury for Burr. And she is injured on the takedown. And she looks like she hurt her back on that takedown. She is pinned. And that is not the way we want to start things with an injury here on the mat. She was taken down by Diaz. And uh, quickly taken down to her back, and it looks like it might be a back injury for Wenatchee's Chloe Burr. Diaz, by the way, the only wrestler on Eastmont's ladies roster who is ranked in the states in the Washington Wrestling Report. She was ranked 10th this week. So a win in our exhibition bout for Gloria Diaz over Chloe Burr. As they tend to her on the mat, we're going to take another break here on the NCW Life Channel. Our broadcast tonight brought to you by Abby's Pizza. For more than 50 years, Abby's has proudly served the Northwest with toppings to the edge. 100% real cheese and freshly rolled dough making an Abby's Pizza night tonight. Also by Biosports Physical Therapy, Aqua Therapy, Sports Biomechanics, Orthopedic Physical Therapy, Orthotics, all you need to keep moving. Find them online at biosports.net. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We'll take a break, come back. More wrestling straight ahead on the NCW Life Channel. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? With today's home values, this is the perfect time to sell and make those dreams real. When you work with a world-class agent at Coldwell Banker, you benefit from trusted guidance in our revolutionary seller's assurance program to make your home sale more rewarding than ever. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. When the people you serve are your friends and family, you see the world a bit differently. You understand that your survival depends on the health and strength of your relationships. Your word is your reputation, and that doing the right thing is the only way of life that matters. At Confluence Health, we remain humble. Trust is a gift that is earned, a privilege, an honor, and we remain grateful for the trust you place in our hands. All right, so they're announcing the official match here. That was an exhibition bout. And a, a win by forfeit will be for Gloria Diaz as they have to check into the scores table and then head out on the mat, and that's where Todd Carter will raise their hand. We'll get the uh, rest of the forfeitures as well. This is Mia Gonzalez, a senior, celebrating senior night here tonight at 125 pounds. So she wins by forfeit. Alina Kalunga will also receive a forfeit here as she checks into the scores table. and She'll head out to where our official Todd Carter will raise her hand at 135 pounds. And then finally, 145-pounder Destiny Burnett will also receive a forfeit here as she checks in, has the hand raised, so Eastmont gets the lopsided win head-to-head -head here in the varsity match here tonight. So we have the uh, varsity boys straight ahead, and again, we'll start at 113 pounds. It'll be Wenatchee's D'Angelo Negretti, a sophomore against Kobe Cervantes for Eastmont, a sophomore as well. Official to take over the match here from the North Central Washington Officials Association is Joseph Olson. We will have the captains out on the mat first to do the coin flip and to determine which team will have the choice first when we start our match, which is brought to you in part by Clean Connection. Call Clean Connection to keep your carpet, upholstery, and air ducts clean for a healthier environment inside your home. Locally owned, find them at yourcleanconnection.com. So it is Wenatchee winning the toss. They choose even. So our even bouts are, so you go one, the first bout is 113 pounds, and then the second would be 120 pounds. 
So then Jackson Gleans for Wenatchee will have the choice first when they get to his match in our second match of the night. So there you go. The coin toss is taken care of. Our broadcast also brought to you by Coldwell Banker Cascade, encouraging you to leave your mark. Coldwell Banker Cascade guiding you home in north central Washington. Well, we've got Wenatchee coming in after their lone loss last week to Sunnyside. A match that came right down to the wire. In fact, to the final match where it was uh, Mateo Armendariz pinning Vincent Goforth in the second round. That was the difference. 41-35, the final in that one. Eastmont comes in tonight with a record of 1-3. and three. A lot of youngsters out on the mat for the uh, Wildcats this year. So here we go. Ne- D'Angelo Negretti against Kobe Cervantes at 113 pounds, where we start our match here tonight on the NCW Life Channel. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching on the stream or you're watching on TV, wherever you may be, thank you for tuning in and supporting high school sports here on the NCW Life Channel. So D'Angelo Negretti in the purple singlet takes the shot, gets in deep, and dumps Cervantes over and gets a near fall points right away going for the pin here early on. The sophomore against the sophomore. So a two-point takedown and a three-point near fall going to be awarded here to Negretti. And then he gets another tip. And some more points coming up and looking for the pin against Cervantes. Kobe Cervantes, the sophomore, fighting for his life here in the first round against the C- er, sophomore, D'Angelo Negretti. And another near fall for Negretti, so he's up 8 nothing here in the early going against the Eastmont wrestler. Good crowd on hand here tonight. In fact, there's uh, hardly a seat left in the house of the uh, grandstands that are available here for this match tonight. Hope it doesn't get confusing. We've got one camera that's up in the stands, our uh, over mat view, and then our other cameras across the way. We've got uh, Grant Olson. Thank you, Grant, for coming tonight and for running camera for us. He's up in the stands. We've got uh, Marion Grandstrom that's uh, not too far from uh, our scorer's table here down on the mat, getting a good view of what's going on as Negretti looking for to arm uh, bar the arm with 44 seconds left in this first period. Our second wrestling match, and unfortunately our final wrestling match broadcast of the season. Cross face for Negretti, working on Cervantes. Cervantes just trying to hang on here and not give up any more points with 30 seconds left in the round. Going for that Nelson, he's got it with 20 seconds. That's a long time for Cervantes to try to hang on. And he gets the pin. It will be a minute 45 into the first round as D'Angelo Negretti gets the win over Kobe Cervantes. And so it's a 6-0 match here early. That will bring us to our 120-pound match. And that will feature Wenatchee's Jackson Gleans, the freshman, against Rudy Vivanco, the senior, for Eastmont. Again, Gleans for Wenatchee, Vivanco for Eastmont. Gleans, the freshman, Vivanco, the senior. Celebrating senior night here tonight. We've got a couple of forfeits ahead, so Eastmont looking for the win here as we get a caution ruled against Gleans. He didn't have his toe on the line, so our official says, okay, hang on here. Here is Vivanco going for the takedown, and he gets a two-point takedown. Beautiful job sidestepping and getting around behind behind Gleans and taking him to the mat. Gleans working on the bottom, the Wenatchee wrestler, and uh, Vivanco on top. Just in away first round of our second match of the night here at 120 pounds. Vivanco has that leg thrown in and now reaching for the far side to get that arm and try to bend him over, and he does. He'll get some exposure time, but according to our official, not enough to get a count, so no points yet. Just over a minute to go here in this first round. Again, Vivanco gets that uh, power Nelson in there. And looking for another pin move here. This time for Eastmont as they trail the match 6-0. But Vivanco trying to even it right here. And, oh, boy, that was close to a pin there. Gleans fighting for his life right now with 51 seconds left here in the first round. Vivanco trying to adjust. will wrap his... Left arm around the head, hold on to the other arm, and then lean back and try to get his both shoulders pinned down to the mat here to give his team six points. And he does. 
And that will be a minute 26 into the first round. So we're two matches in and two pins so far. The match is even at 6-6, but here we go with points coming Wenatchee's way with Cannon Sanders winning by forfeit. So that will make it 12-6 <clears throat> as he'll come out and get his hand raised. And then Matthias Soto will also come out and get a forfeit of 132 pounds. So that will make it an 18-6 match as we'll head to 138 pounds. For Wenatchee's Bryant Witherington, the senior, against Keiston Hughes, the freshman for Eastmont. Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Confluence Health. High-quality care close to home. Confluence Health dedicated to improving their patients' health with safe, high-quality care in 12 communities. So, again, it's Brian Witherington against Keiston Hughes here. The matchup at 138 pounds. Everybody checking in with the scorer's table. Joseph Olson wetting his whistle out there. Not wetting his whistle that's hanging around his neck, but his whistle as far as his mouth is concerned. As the wrestlers shake hands, and we're ready to go in this match at 138 pounds. Weatherington with a shot, trying to cover the hips, trying to get the takedown, and he's awarded the takedown. It's a two-point lead for Weatherington, the senior against the freshman Hughes for Eastmont. And uh, Hughes got to his feet, but then quickly taking him back down as Weatherington. Witherington shoots a leg in. Look out, he's a little high. And Hughes gets the reversal, gets near full points. Now Witherington trying to crowd. Witherington trying to hang on to the head. And we're going to get a two-point near fall. So suddenly it is Hughes, the freshman, on top, four to two. Hughes looking for the far side cradle. Witherington with just a little bit of a mistake there, getting too high in his pitting move the other way. So Hughes taking advantage as the wrestlers go out of bounds. It will be Witherington down and Hughes up. How about this one? Wrestlers need to face the official in the down position, Witherington. So Bryant is ready. We'll see what kind of move he has from the bottom here as we're a minute, 10 seconds into this first round. So hang on here. We're looking at the timetable here. It looks like we need to add some time back on the clock. We do. Okay, so we didn't get the clock quite stopped, the whistle, so they put another 20 seconds back on there. So a minute 10 left here in this first round. Witherington gives the nod to the official, says he's ready. So Hughes boards, and they're going to give a caution to Hughes. When you are in the referee's position is what they're trying to do here. One hand needs to go up on the just above the elbow. The other hand has to wrap around and go right over the top of the navel before the official can start wrestling. He starts wrestling here, and Witherington trying to do his best to at least get out or maybe get a reversal as Hughes is hanging on for dear life right now. The Eastmont wrestler. Hughes trying to pull his head back out. Witherington trying to hang on to that head. And Witherington will still be down here. As Hughes tries to go with a power half, but he doesn't have a leg shot in. Usually you want to get a leg in there. And now a Granby roll there for Witherington. And they're going to give him a two-point reversal. And now he's going for near fall points with 27 seconds left in the round. Trying to get the pin now. Hughes trying to stay alive. The Wenatchee fans who are here cheering mightily. Now and they are going to give three-point near fall. So back and forth we go. Seven to four the score with Witherington on top, both in the match and literally here with seven seconds left in the round. Bryant Witherington up a little high. Crowding is Hughes. And the time's going to run out before they can get anything else accomplished here in this first round. What a round between the senior Bryant Witherington of Wenatchee and the freshman Keiston Hughes for the Small Wildcats. So the signal is for the choice to the Eastmont wrestler. He defers, and so Witherington says both wrestlers up. Brian Witherington breathing heavy right now after the work he put in in that first round. There's a shot by Hughes. 
Witherington has his uh, headgear come up over his mouth. Meanwhile, Hughes grabs a leg and heads for out of bounds. They're out of bounds without anybody gaining an advantage here. And ouch, Hughes hurt on it, and he may have hurt his nose. We're going to get a timeout, injury timeout on the mat. As the two wrestlers went sprawling out of bounds, there was a late move there, and now Keiston Hughes is in a lot of pain. So the training staff respawn is out to 10-2. The wrestler on the mats. Megan McCart is the athletic trainer here for Eastmont High School. Our broadcast brought to you in part by Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, providing heating and air conditioning service and installation since 1982. Serving residential and commercial, they specialize in indoor air quality, installation, service, and repair. So this is uh, injury, not blood. So it's a two-minute injury timeout to see if Eastmont's Keiston Hughes can continue here. Having a heck of a match with Bryant Witherington in a 7-4 bout right now. He's up in a seated position. Couldn't tell exactly what happened there. It looks like he got hit right in the in the schnoz. And so they're dealing with that right now. But they're not, it's not a blood timeout because blood timeout, it's five minutes, and they would do the running clock up on the clock. But right now it's just an injury timeout, two minutes. We'll see if he can continue. Easton Hughes. He's a little groggy right now. They need to also, you know, it's it, with every sport, they got to keep in mind protection of the head, protection of the brain, concussion protection. And that's what they're checking right now for Keiston Hughes, the freshman for East Bond High School. So the clock stopped. Well, the clock is at a minute 47 in the round. And looks like Keiston Hughes is going to try to continue here. Tyler McGee came over to the scorer's table to check on. Well, he was over there checking on his wrestler. And now he'll go around. And both wrestlers are up here. And we'll see if Keiston Hughes is really okay or not. He still looks like he's a little groggy. And the official kind of giving him that and letting him get his foot set on the line before he blows the whistle. Met up 43 to go. And a shot by Witherington, and he's going for the leg and the head. Going to try to cradle him up here, but he's got the wrong leg to be able to accomplish that. He's going to pick him up and then try to toss him over. Can't do it. Now he's going to crowd. He's looking for a head. He's reaching up high. Now he's going to get himself in trouble, possibly. Both wrestlers still even here. Nobody has the advantage. As they head for out of bounds, I give credit to Keaston Hughes. Boy, I'm telling you, he got a smack to the face. Right in the nose. But he's still out there grappling for the Wildcats. Minute 15 to go here in the second round. 7-4. Bryant Witherington and Wenatchee leading it. Shot here by Hughes. He's got a leg deep. Can he hang on to it and get the advantage? And gain the advantage of a two-point takedown. Hughes, meanwhile, trying to post his hand down and get his hips behind to show that he's got control. He will throw him down to the mats, and they're going to give a two-point takedown. And now the wrestler on the bottom is saying, I can't breathe. And I think this could be the end of it here as, well, we'll see. It's a three-point near fall. Two-point takedown, three-point near fall. They're saying nine to four is the score. Well, 13 to four is the score. And we've got 52 seconds left here in this round. Well, hang on. The round's not over yet. The official is giving a choice here. So there's a... When the wrestler on the bottom taps the arm of the wrestler on top, and they stop the match. So we're talking about scoring here. So I think they awarded four points to Witherington. And because they stopped the match, uh, it's Witherington's call whether he wants to be on top or not. So he takes both wrestlers on their feet. So Witherington trying to take him down again. And he does and quickly goes for the tip here with need to run the clock. 52 seconds still on the clock. So I don't know what we're doing with the clock here. But uh, 
Back to his feet is Hughes. Witherington. Now he's going to get called for locking the hands on the mat. So that's going to be a point for Hughes. So we're going to get a whistle and a timeout. And Witherington was going for a cross face. And a one point awarded here to Hughes. Meanwhile, we're having some issues with the clock. So Hughes on the bottom trails it here 16 to 4. So Witherington looking to gain more points here for Wenatchee. If he can get a technical fall, that's six points for the Panthers. Or he's looking maybe for the pin here. Going for that power Nelson. Again, he doesn't have the leg shot in. He's kind of covered the one leg. So he might be able to achieve the power Nelson. Now he's going to go for a near side cradle. Got the head in the side of the body with 20 seconds left in, in a very long round. And extremely long if you're Keiston Hughes for the East Mall Wildcats. Hughes trying to work on the bottom here. Witherington needs to break the hips down before he can do what he's trying to do right there with the arm barred. And that's going to be the end of the round. And it is Witherington leading at 16 to 4 as we head for the third round. Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Global Car Care. Your vehicle is their number one priority. Diesels and European cars are their specialty. Pick up and drop off available too. Stop by their website at globalcarcare.net. So Witherington will be down to start the third round. Hughes on top, and the official takes a look to make sure that they're in the right position. And a beautiful reversal. Sit out reversal here for Witherington. So he gets another two points. He leads it 18 to 4. Again, trying to work with an arm bar here, but you know, the best way to do that from my old coach's perspective was to break down the body of the wrestler on the bottom, get him down to the mat before you try to bar something up. He does have the leg shot in here. And now just gonna reach for the other leg and try to get some tip points. Kind of freestyle move here for Bryant Witherington. Witherington, you gotta be careful because that can happen. And Hughes reached it back for the head. Not much happening there. So Witherington's gonna have to try something else. Now goes to the power half, but he's got it with the wrong hand with that leg in on the same side. Now Hughes gets to his feet, looking for an escape, looking for a throw here with a minute to go in the third round. And it will be a control, they say, for Witherington. Looking for tip points and not able to get it. So he'll cover the hips. Hughes still on the bottom. So there was no reversal there, no points. And now Witherington will just let him go. There's a one-point escape. It's 18-5. to five. Shot by Witherington with 35 seconds. Witherington looking for the head, and he's going to get the two-point takedown. That makes it 20-5. to five. Hughes back up again. Both wrestlers side by side. And now we're going to get a whistle with 21.3 seconds. Well, the scoreboard doesn't go to 20. It only goes to 10. So it's 20 to 5. So that should be a technical fall here, and it is. So Brian Witherington will get a technical fall, winning it 20 to 5. And that will be another six points for Wenatchee, or five points for Wenatchee, excuse me. 23 to 6 is our score as we go to 145 pounds. And this will be Frank Brandt for Wenatchee and Caden Vreeman for Eastmont. Vreeman is a senior. And Brandt, they didn't tell me, but looks to be freshman ish. So Frank Brandt out there in the purple singlet for Wenatchee will go up against Caden uh, Vreeman for the Eastmont Wildcats. Senior for the Wildcats. And quickly, he'll grab a head, take a leg, get the takedown. Vreeman in charge here early. Now reaching for that hand and going to try to tip Brant over. He's got the half in, sort of. Trying to tip, trying to tip, and he's close. He's close. He adjusts. He's got the leg as well. He gave the leg up, and now didn't get any tip points, I don't think. The official never did count, or did he? He's going for a different move. And when you go for the different move, they usually, if you have any points coming to you, will award it at that juncture. Minute 26 to go here in round number one. 
with Caden Freeman of Eastmont trying to give the Wildcats their second set of points here tonight. It was Rudy Vivanco getting a pin in our 120-pound match that gave Eastmont its first points of the night to tie it up at 6-6 at that point. It's now 23-6, Wenatchee on top in the match. Caden Vreeman on top in this particular match as he'll let Brent go. Couldn't work anything, so it's a 2-1 match. See what Vreeman does. Breaks him down to a knee. Maybe going to try for a throw here with 46 seconds left in this first round. Vreeman. Shot. Looking for one leg. Got two legs. Got the two-point takedown. As Brant Goes down, and now I'm trying to do that power half again. It's obviously something the coaching staff here at Eastmont teaches vehemently. He reaches under, trying to pull that arm through with 10 seconds left of the round. Now he gets the half in, and he might be able to pin him. Five seconds left in the round. Can Brant stay alive? And he will. But it, will, it will be Vreeman getting three points in the near fall, and so now he leads it 7-1 to over Frank Brandt. Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Harvest Valley Pest Control, living healthy, local, and pest-free. You can rest assured that Harvest Valley Pest Control uses kit and pet-safe material around your home or office. Call Harvest Valley Pest Control today for your free estimate at 509-423-2207. So Vreeman will be down here to start this second round with Brant on top. Again, quick sit out and a spin away and a beautiful job by Vreeman to get an escape. One point for Vreeman. He leads it 8-1. to one. Now looking for another takedown. Vreeman, the senior on senior nights, now spins and able to get the two-point takedown. Frank Brandt on the bottom for what at you. It's Caden Vreeman for Eastmont. V-R-E-E-M-A-N. Cross-face attempt there by Vreeman, but reaching up and grabbing that hand is Brandt. So Vreeman trying to do what he can. Gets that cross-face again. And trying to reach and shift and pull that arm over as he's trying to get near fall points again. He's got him tipped with a minute two to go here in the round. Now he needs to adjust, maybe go for a half. He does. Had it for a minute and then lost it. Now he's got it. Now he's in a good pitting move with 54 seconds left. Got to adjust chest to chest a little bit. Brant trying to do what he can to stay alive here. Our official Joseph Olson right down there. Take a peek. One shoulder is down, not both. And now arching a little bit is Vreeman. Trying to get that other shoulder blade to touch the mat. And boy, he is close. Vreeman. And now trying to roll as Brant to stay alive with 18 seconds. Boy, he's doing a good job of staying alive down there. Just seven seconds left in the round. Can Brant stay alive? Vreeman looking for the pin. Oh, 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 Brant stayed alive. How about that? Three-point near fall for Vreeman. He leads it now 13-1 to one over Frank Brant. That's a heck of a job by the young man for Wenatchee. Just to keep his shoulders off the mat. So Vreeman will be down here to start round number three. Appreciate you joining us here on the NCW Live channel. Eric Grandstrom with you. And a big crowd on hand here for the final match of the Big Nine season. Beautiful reversal here for Vreeman. Another two points for Caden. Trying to wrap up his senior season here at home. Final match here at Eastmont High School for the senior. In front of a big crowd on hand. And get a victory for his team.
Vreeman keeps working for that uh, far side arm and then just tries to refund it. And the way Brandt kind of sits away from him, he's, he's got the potential for a far side cradle, but he's just not seeing it. He does have the hips broken down this time. But again, trying to bar up that left arm while he's got it held onto by his other hand on the wrist. So he's kind of hurting himself and trying to make that move here. Minutes left in round number three. All Vreeman here leading at 15 to 1. <laughs> Coming up next will be 152 pounds with Trenton Miller and Nelson Nygaard. The matchup here tonight between East Bonts and Wenatchee, the Cross River rivalry renewed. This rivalry and this match in wrestling between these two schools goes back to the 1966-67 season. So it's been going on a long time. And Wenatchee leads the overall series 57 to 25. Been pretty even though the last 11 matches with Wenatchee winning six, Eastmont winning five. Panthers in charge of this one with 15 seconds left in the round here as Freeman has done all he can physically to try to get a pin here, but just not able to get Brant. Now will Brant finally relent? Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, and no, didn't get it. Three-point near fall, so an 18-to-1 win here for Caden Freeman. So that's five points, team points, for Eastmont. And again, Frank Brandt did a great job of just staying alive there, and his teammates cheered him on over on the far side just to give up 15 points and not 16 points. So a 152-pound match is next. It's Trenton Miller for Wenatchee, the senior against Nelson Nygaard, the freshman for Eastmont. Our broadcast here on the NCW Life Channel brought to you by Highlander Golf Course and Grill. Plan your next tournament and event today. Call the Pro Shop to schedule your time. They're full swing. S4 widescreen golf simulators at 509-884-4653. That's 509-884-4653. Again, our team score, Wenatchee on top, 23-11. to 11. Trying to win their fifth match of the season in Big Nine head-to-head -head matchups. Here we go. 152 pounds. Miller, Nygaard, Wenatchee. Eastmont, Miller, the senior, Nygaard, the freshman. The shot by Miller, and they go towards off the mat, and no advantage gains, so they'll be both back on their feet. The official blows his whistle, says we're good to go. Trenton Miller, now a throw, but going out of bounds, unharmed is Nygaard. They'll head back towards the center circle. Shot by Nygaard. Both wrestlers kind of sizing each other up here. And the fireman, almost fireman carry a look there for Miller. Shot in deep. Miller, two-point takedown. Looking for near fall points, but they're going off the mats. And will he give him near fall? He will give him two near fall points. Wow. So Miller's up 4 nothing over Nygaard. With a minute five to go here in this first round. Miller will go with a left-handed setup. Picks up the wrestler, drops him back down. As Nygaard quickly jumped to his feet from the referee's position. Nygaard strong on the lower half. Leg shot in here for Trenton Miller. Now he's got that arm. Well, he had it barred for a moment. Trying to look at a freestyle move using his legs to get the cradle. Looking for the pin here is Trenton Miller. How about this move? And Nygaard, I believe if he scissors his feet together, he should be able to get his legs free, I'm thinking. But a pin. One minute and 41 seconds into the first round. Trent Miller of Wenatchee pins Ni Nelson Nygaard. 
giving Wenatchee another six points, so it's 29 to 11 now. We're going to add some more team points for Wenatchee as Joe Skyleman will get a win by forfeit at 160 pounds, so that'll jump our score to 35 11. And then we'll have another match at 170 pounds, but first, Joe Skyleman's going to get his hand raised. Our official clues in that this is a forfeit. And our next match will be 160 pounds. Excuse me, 170 pounds. Freshman John Gutzweiler for Wadanchi against sophomore Randy Binner for Eastmont. So here we go, 170 pounds. Looking for this one to be a pretty good one. Gutzweiler, Wadanchi, Binner, Eastmont. Ran into some of Binner's family out in the lobby here before the match tonight. Had the name on the back of the sweatshirt, so I said, uh, Binner? Is it Binner? And they said, yep, like winner. <laughs> I said, okay, I got gotcha. you. Shot by Gutzweiler. Counter by Binner. Trying to keep that head down. And both wrestlers up to their feet. No advantage. So something interesting for basketball tomorrow night. We'll tell you that during the uh, break between the first and second period. But we will be back here at Eastmont High School. Grant and I will have your play-by-play -play for girls basketball at 545, live on Facebook. And the boys will follow live on Facebook and television at 730. Shot by Gutzweiler and a counter by Benner. Benner trying to gain the advantage here, but Gutzweiler still has the leg. If he doesn't give up that leg, he will still have... No control given up, but he finally does have to. And it's a two-point takedown. Our first points of the match come with 45 seconds left in the round. So Binner with a two-point advantage here. And sophomore over freshman right now. Gutzweiler on the bottom for Wadanchi. And Randy Binner on top for Eastbaugh. Light bulbs flashing here with cameras taking shots of the wrestlers on the bats and both stand up, but... Gutzweiler not able to get free, so he'll still be down here as they head back to the referee's position. 23.1 seconds left here in round number one. Appreciate you joining us here on the NCW Life Channel. Gutzweiler ready. Benner approaches. Whistle sounds. Sit out by Gutzweiler. Quickly covering the hips is Benner. Gutzweiler again, one leg posted up. Hand fighting, hand fighting, hand fighting. Now if you sit out, nope, not able to do it before they go out of bounds. And so the wrestlers, by the way, while they're on their feet, they can lock their hands. If they're in a pinning move on the mat, they can also lock their hands. Like, for example, a cradle. You can lock your hands when you're in a pinning move. Other than that, you cannot lock your hands. So if a wrestler's on the mat, the wrestler on top is hanging on for dear life and reaches around and his hands overlap, that's considering, considered locking your hands, and that's one point for your opponent. So, uh, just a note for tomorrow night. There are some health issues going on with the Wenatchee coaching staff, I understand, in the basketball program. And so, Jim Beeson, the athletic director at Wenatchee High School, will be the head coach for both the girls and the boys' varsity uh, games tomorrow night. So, a little bit of an interesting wrinkle in things for the Eastmont Wenatchee matchup tomorrow. As we get going in the second round, it's Gutzweiler on top, Benner with a sit out. But Goots covered. And again, another sit in that time by Benner. But Gootswilder does a good job to counter. Now Benner to his feet, trying to break the locked hands. And as soon as you take the wrestler down to the mat, then you have to give up. Uh oh, look out, Benner. He almost gave up the arm there. And now Gootswilder looking for a tip. He's trying to drive, but instead, I think Benner might get a one-point escape at least here. Now he's covering the hips. He might get a two-point reversal. He does. How about that? Looks like Gutzweiler had uh, maybe an opportunity for some near-fall points, and then suddenly it is Benner getting the reversal. So he leads it 4 nothing here with a minute three to go in the second round. Binner trying to do what he can to break Gutzweiler down. The wrestlers go out of bounds, and so we'll head back to the center of the map. Yeah, 
And again, the amount of energy suspended when you're out there wrestling someone that use your exact weight and maybe your exact physical makeup is just exhausting. Every muscle burns about this point of the match. Conditioning is paramount for anybody who wants to think about wrestling. I wrestled uh, my senior year in high school, and I was never in better shape in my life than when I wrestled. Standing up is Gutzweiler. Binner following, trying with the trip. He gets him down with 30 seconds left here in the first or second round. Wrestlers are close to being out of bounds again, so the official might have to stop it and head back to the center of the mat. Gutzweiler is out. Binner is now out as well, and so here we go back to the center. Our broadcast tonight on the NCW Life Channel brought to you by Kennedy Real Estate Group. They're more than selling houses. They're building communities, buying or selling. Call Kennedy Real Estate Group and find them online at kenadygroup.com. Kennedygroup.com. So our official is ready. Wrestler's ready with 16 seconds. Sit out attempt by Gutzweiler, and he's got the reversal. Now a sit out attempt by Binner. Binner crowds looking for the reversal with four seconds left of the round. Gutzweiler just trying to hang on here. It's a 4-2 match right now, and they're going to say no reversal points, so it stays 4-2. Binner leads it by two, heading into our final two minutes. Good match here in our 170-pound meeting between John Gutzweiler for Wenatchee and Randy Binner for Eastbound. Gutzweiler on the bottom here, Benner on the top. Whistle sounds, sit out attempt by Gutzweiler. Good follow and cover of the hips by Benner. Benner with a tight waist, trying to break Gutzweiler down to the mat and get him off his base. When I say he's on his base, that means he's on his knees or better. Gutzweiler, very strong on the bottom here for Wenatchee. Cross face by Benner. He doesn't have a leg in, but he does have the hips covered. That's his hips behind the hips of the wrestler beneath him. Now he oh, Gutzweiler reached up, gave him the half Nelson. Oh, now we got a full Nelson, and that's illegal. And that is a one point awarded to, your, to Wenatchee. So that makes it a 4-3 match with a minute 23 to go. Incredible. Coming right down to it here at 170 pounds. Benner with a little mistake there, and it cost him a point. Gutzweiler to his feet, hand fighting, hand fighting, hand fighting, trying to turn. He can't do it. Good job by Benner to break him back down to the mat. Minute 12 for somebody to win this match. Benner hanging on for dear life. Gutzweiler working feverishly on the bottom. Benner looking to bar the arm. Gutzweiler reaches through and grabs, and now they go out of bounds, and a nice idea by both wrestlers there. But no points awarded. 58 seconds says Carlos Adamy, head coach for Wenatchee, screaming at the top of his lungs. Of course, they're wearing headgear hard, just about impossible to hear what anybody says. Except when I wrestled <laughs> my mother in the top of the bleachers. <laughs> Come on, Eric, get off your back. <laughs> Yeah, I heard her. I couldn't hear my coach, who was only 15 feet away from me, but I could hear my mom clear up in the rafters. 38 seconds left. Gutzweiler. Binner. Binner has near fall points. Looking for a pin, and he got it. A minute. 32 into round number three. Binner with the pin. So that makes it 35-17. Now we go to 182 pounds. This one should be interesting as well. We've got freshman Luke Flugi against sophomore Alexis Sotelo. Broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Les Schwab. Les Schwab takes your safety seriously every time you stop by. So here we go. 182 pounds. Luke Flugi for Wenatchee. Alexis Sotelo for Eastmont. An official got a drink, so I can too. 
Flugi reaches up, grabs Sotelo, breaks him down to the mat. Flugi looking for two and then looking to go right to his back. He'll get the two point takedown anyway. The Wenatchee wrestler leading it two to nothing. Now looking for the power half. He's got it. Headgear comes off. And look for the chicken wing here. Look out, look out. He reverses the hold. He's looking for a pin is Flugi. Luke Flugi trying to adjust, hangs onto that arm. Now he's trying to bring him back towards his back again with that arm bar. It's a three point near fall, five nothing match. Flugi again, drawing him in. Alexis Sotelo without the headgear, adjusts and then rolls. And will he get a near fall point there or not? Flugi again trying to readjust. And they're gonna say a two point near fall for Flugi. So he's on top, seven to nothing. Flugi looking for the half. Sotelo. What you want to do as a bottom wrestler when they get that half Nelson is you look away from where it's coming from. You reach up and pull that hand off the top of your head if you can. Sometimes they get that half in so deep and so hard, it's hard to get it out of there. 30 seconds left here in the first round of our 182-pound match. Luke Flugi for Wenatchee leading Alexis Sotelo for Eastbound. Nope, and we got a full Nelson again. Second time the last two matches, so one point going to be awarded to Sotelo as Luke Flugi had both hands under armpits and reached up and grabbed the neck. You can't do that. That's a full Nelson, and that is a dangerous hold. Sotelo looking for a little help from Coach McGee on the headgear here. Gives us a chance to remind you our broadcast brought to you in part by Sangster Motors, family owned and operated home of the all new electric Hummer pickup and SUV. Looking forward to basketball tomorrow night as Wenatchee and Eastmont meet for the third and final time this season. 5.45 for the girls, 7.30 for the boys. We'll have the girls live on Facebook and then the boys live on TV and Facebook at 7.30 and then the girls game will be broadcast on TV at about 10.30 tomorrow night. So be sure and tune in for more high school sports here on your local TV station, the NCAA Live Channel. So I, I got a feel for Tyler McGee right now. He uh, was tabbed because of uh, Hugh Chang just not feeling up to it. So Hugh... Uh, Best of wishes for you to get healthy, my friend. Meanwhile, Tyler McGee given the reins here to lead the team, at not only just, you know, by the way, be the head coach for a night. By the way, it's senior night. By the way, it's a home match against your Cross River rival. And now, by the way, Tyler, can you fix my headgear? <laughs> so Tyler does a good job on all fronts. So it looks like Sotelo's got the gear figured out. And he will be down with 22.8 seconds left in this first round. Trails at 7 to 1. Flugi's ready. Sotelo ready. The whistle sounds. Flugi gets out to the side. Just trying to horse him over. Not really a hold there, per se. Now he's got the hammer lock. Let me try for the hammer lock. Now he tries for the half Nelson. Can't get any of that solved before the end of the first round. 7-1 to the score with Flugi leading Sotelo here. We've got Evan Burdan and Ricky Kalunga. Don't go anywhere. That's going to be a big one coming up next at 195 pounds. You've got Evan Burdan ranked second in the state at 195 pounds. You've got Ricardo or Ricky Kalunga ranked 10th at 195 pounds. As both wrestlers get ready for districts here in a couple of weeks. Flugi gets a one-point escape. Now looking for the takedown. And more. Minute 50 to go here in the second round of the two-point takedown for Flugi. This is Luke Flugi, one of two Flugi brothers wrestling for the Wenatchee Panthers. Jack will be up here in a couple of weight classes. Now looking for the half is Flugi. Again, Luke is just a freshman, so Tello for Eastmont here is a sophomore. And if Luke stays with it, he'll be a good wrestler by the time well, next year rolls around, really. Just a little more fine-tuning on some of the moves. 
This is my first time seeing Sotelo wrestle here for Eastmont. Hanging in there. Trailing it here 10 to 1 after the escape and the two point takedown by Flugi. Flugi has both, well, he had both hands on the wrist. And now, I'm not trying to, I'm not sure what he's trying to accomplish there. Well, obviously, he's trying to tip him over to his back, but he doesn't really have a hold to do so. Now he reaches for the wrist, reaches between the legs, and tips him that way. Interesting way to do it. And now Sotelo trying to just arch his back, keep his shoulders off the mats. And uh, Flugi not in the best positions here. Now he'll adjust and see if he comes back around the head. He still doesn't have the head. He does have him pinned, though, from this perspective. Both shoulders were on the mat, but the official was away from it. Couldn't see it. He, if he came over this side, now he's finally trying to do so to see what's going on with 14 seconds left here in the round. Sotelo fighting for his life in this match. Again, Flugi adjusts, pulls, pulls, and it is one second left in the round. Ooh. Did he get the pin or not? I think the buzzer sounded before the pin. Let's see what the official says. He's going to say no pin. He's going to say a three-point near fall. So that makes it 13 to 1. There was the buzz before the pin. And now we've got a blood timeout as Sotelo has some blood coming out of his nose. So the training staff here for Eastmont will treat that and start a five-minute blood clock here for Alexis Sotelo. Following tomorrow night, we have one more sports broadcast for the winter season. Next Saturday is scheduled. Eastmont at home to wrap up the Big Nine basketball season. We'll have that Saturday here on the NCW Life Channel a week from this Saturday. So while they take care of the nose of Sotelo, they're also trying to wipe the blood off of Flugi. And they'll eventually stop the five-minute clock. They leave the cotton in the nose. And we got blood on the mat here, says our officials. So we'll have to take care of that as well. Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Save Mart. Shop smart, shop local, providing outstanding value and service since 1962. Well, I've been having some fun here, kind of moonlighting a little bit. I've been uh, helping out KKRV Radio on uh, the radio station in the morning with Brent Rhodes. I'll be back there tomorrow morning at 104.7 FM. I had a bunch of people again here at the match tonight say they heard me on the radio. You know, we had a conversation about certs today on the radio. You remember certs? You had lifesavers and you had certs. And my question was whether certs are still around. And, of course, the immediate thought is, well, yeah, of course they are. Uh, I went to five different stores today, and you think I could find a roll of certs? Nope. Flugi on top to start our final round here as he leads it 13-1 to in our 182-pound match. Luke trying to do what he can, working from the side here against Alexis Sotelo. He's got the cross face, looking for a far side cradle maybe? He's got to get the leg, though, in order to do that. So again, just uh, you know, you can tell freshman he's got it. He's got the idea, just doesn't have the right technique on some of these moves. So Tello tried to get up to his feet. Flugi tried to put a leg in. Now breaks the hips down. What a minute 15 to go. Both wrestlers at this point exhausted. Half Nelson was in momentarily for Flugi. And now reaches back and grabs the leg and gets it back broke down. And now tries that power half from the far side. Now he's got a half in the near side. If he takes it, he didn't take it. Sotelo doing what he can from the bottom right here. He's looking up the uh, team's results at state tournaments. Best finish for... Eastmont back in 96 and 97, second place finishes. Man sitting right next to me, state champion. 19, was it 96 or 7? 97. Matt Prazier. Sean Reyes, also a state champion, 101 pounds, back when they had the 101 weight. 
in 96 and 97. Best finish for Wenatchee was second place back in 99. So 90s was good wrestling here in the Valley, that's for sure. So it's a half Nelson from the far side with his near side leg put in. And look out is Sotelo's going to get the two point or the two point reversal here with one second left in the match. And that'll be it. 13 3 is our final with Luke Flugie getting the win but cannot get the pin. And so he'll get his team four team points. That makes it 39 to 17 here. And we go to 195 pounds. This is the one I've been looking for. It is Evan Burdan, the senior for Wenatchee. Ricky Kalunga, the sophomore for Eastmont. Crowd roars its approval over this matchup here tonight. You've got the second ranked wrestler in the state taking on the 10th ranked wrestler in the state. Burdan with the shot, has one leg, tries to do the elevator. Kalunga trying to counter. Trying to get that leg free. Burdan tries to put his weight down. Did he get a two-point takedown beforehand? Yes, he did. Says the official. So two points for Burdan. And Kalunga will adjust the knee brace or the knee pad before he gets set. So birth name Ricardo, but they call him Ricky. And he will sit out. Burdan follows. Evan Burdan, we saw him last week against Sunnyside, just completely overpower his opponent in a pin last week. Right here on the NCW Life Channel. Kalunga trying to do what he can from the bottom. Burdan out to the side trying to get that arm free, but Kalunga's got it right hanging onto his own leg. So he would not give it up. Minute 10 left here in the first round. Big fellows on the mat right now at 195 pounds. Now, Burdan has the arm barred, but Kalunga doing a good job going away from it. And he pulls that arm out, gets it free. Burdan cross face now. Trying to get the twist. Kalunga following, following, following. And now the turn by Burdan. Kalunga just powerful himself with 33 seconds left here in this first round. Near fall points for Burdan coming up. Kalunga trying to stay alive as he spins. And he will keep himself from getting pinned here, but he does give up a three-point near fall. Well, the official hasn't given it yet to Burdan. Now he finally does. It's 5 nothing with 13 seconds left here in the first round. Both wrestlers' legs are off the mat, but their upper body is headed towards the mat, so the official lets it continue. Kalunga spinning. There was at least a two-point near fall there as Burdan gets more mat exposure to the shoulders, and he leads it here heading to the second 7 nothing over Ricky Kalunga. Kalunga will defer his choice, and Burdan will pick both wrestlers up. Evan Burdan heading for the Marine Corps. I think we heard uh, there's a wrestler for Eastmont on senior night here that's going to be headed to the Army. So congratulations to both, and thank you for your eventual service. We appreciate it. Evan Burdan saying he wants to wrestle for the... Uh, Marine Corps, if he can make the team. That's if you can make the team. Well, you know, we've seen some pretty tough military wrestlers in the past, but uh, I think Evan Burdan, he sticks to with what he's doing. He's got a good chance of making the Marine Corps team. Burdan with a shot. Had, went for two, has one leg. Now I'm going to try the elevator in the trip. He's got it, and a two-point takedown. With a minute 20 to go. He jumps up to a 9-0 lead here. Burdan with a heavy cross face. Now Kalunga back to his base. Ricky trying to do what he can. He'll sit out. Burdan covers. Breaks him back down. Kalunga back up to his base here. Hand fighting. Hand fighting. Some guys, you wrestle them, it's like trying to wrestle an anaconda. It seems everywhere you turn, they got to hold you somehow. 
Evan Verdan hanging on to anything he can grab a hold of right now for Ricky Kalunga. Kalunga back up to his base. Verdan follows again another cross face with that right arm. Gets right across. You hope as a wrestler on the top when you do that cross face, you get him right across the bridge of the nose. Kalunga almost gave up that arm on the right side for a half Nelson, but Verdan didn't see it. Kalunga does a good job of getting back to his base, but then whap, there's that cross face again by Verdan. Now he's got the shoulder. Now he's out to the side. Going to try to turn him with 10 seconds left of the round. Kalunga trying to hang on to that leg. Now reversing the half is Verdan. He's got near fall points at least with one. That's going to be the end of the round. So three near fall points for Evan Burdan. He leads it 12-0 here over Ricky Kalunga. Jack Flugie and Spencer Housden coming up next at 100 or make that 220 pounds. That should be a good one as well. So Kalunga will be down here to start our third and final round. Evan Burdan probably not used to uh, going three rounds this season. Wrestlers are ready. Official blows his whistle. Kalunga got up. Burdan breaks him back down. Now Burdan switches over to the right side. Now trying to go for a far side cradle while Kalunga was getting up to his base. Now Kalunga reaches over, grabs the head, had the two-point reversal given to him, and now a two-point reversal for Burdan. 14 to 2. So sometimes, yeah, as a wrestler, you can make a mistake, and if the wrestler on the bottom finds it just the right time, they can make a match suddenly turn. We saw that last week in our first match of the night at 106 pounds. It was all sunny side, and then suddenly the freshman for Wenatchee came up with the win by pin. And that's Ryder Whitley for Wenatchee, who's going to be our final match of the night at 106 pounds against Jake Schrader. That should be a good one as well. So don't go away. Berdan looking for the arm bar with 53 seconds. And Berdan looking for more tip points, and he will get him here, and he might get a pin. Kalunga battling against a very powerful man on top of him right now and a pin. 123 into the third round. What a match it was. Evan Burdan with the win by pin. 45 to 17 becomes our team score. I've got 44 on the board. Is it 44 or 45? Didn't we just have 39? <clears throat> Jack Flugey and Spencer Housden now. 220 pounds. We're okay. All right. So Jack Flugey, junior for Wenatchee, Spencer Housden, the senior for Eastmont. Both wrestlers go out of bounds. So back to the center of the mat. This should be interesting. Flugie, like he did last week, just trying kind of a bull rush and then get in tight and wrap up the other wrestler and pull him in close to him and then twist him to the, to the mat. Just trying to overpower the other wrestler. And now trying to trip, and both wrestlers go out of bounds, and so the official stops the match. We head back to the center. Minute 24 to go here in the first. Both wrestlers ready, head-to-head. -head. Now it's just a matter of strength and positioning. Flugie wants to reset it. Fake the shot. Housden locks him up. Again, Flugie the junior, Housden the senior for Isma. Lugi looks to go outside with the arms, and Housen likes to go inside, looks to me like. Flugi with a shot. Got in deep on a single leg. Now trying to follow, and he does, and he gets the two-point takedown. First points of the match come with 40 seconds left in round number one. So a lead for Jack Flugi 
on the takedown. Now let's see how they do on the mat. Flugie with a tight waist. And he's got that arm. He's got the half Nelson. And now trying to reverse himself. Don't get too high there. He got exposure, but I don't know if he got any points or not. And they are going to say a two-point near fall. And Flugie picked him up, so the official says, all right, we don't want to get anybody hurt here. And they were close to going out of bounds, and so the official says, now nah, let's just head back to the center of the mat. 4 nothing, Flugie on top. The two-point takedown and the two-point near fall. Flugie ready. Housden tried to stand up. Flugie covers. Flugie barring up the arm. Just five seconds left here in the round. and going to try to tip him again, and he does. And he will get at least two on the near fall. And it is two-point near fall and a 6 nothing lead here for Jack Flugie. Our broadcast tonight brought to you in part by Together for Youth, encouraging you to dispose of unused and expired prescriptions to protect youth and the environment. Find a kiosk near you by visiting medproject.org. So when Anchi East want basketball tomorrow night, then a week from Saturday, our final match of the regular final game of the regular season, Eisenhower at Eastbond here at Eastbond High School. Senior nights on that night. The official looked like it was going to call locking hands. Flugie, meanwhile, has that arm barred up again. Going to go for a pin early here in the second round. Pulls the wrestler back. Housden now staring at the lights. Flugie reverses it. Now arching, trying to stay chest to chest, and gets the pin. 123, excuse me, 23 seconds into the second round. Jack Flugie with the win by pin. Makes it a 51-17 match. We've got two more matches left on the night. 285 pounds now as Vincent Goforth, the senior for Wenatchee, will go up against Luke Kredrowski, the senior for Eastmont. Hey, Matt. Matt. Is it is it Kredrowski or... Kedrowski, okay. Kedrowski, there we go. So, minute 48 to go. I was asking a Matt here at the table, not Matthew back in the studio. Sorry about the confusion there, Matthew. 141 left here, underway. 285 pounds. That's your super heavyweights. Go forth in the purple singlet for Wenatchee. And Kedrowski, the wrestler for Eastmont in the red singlet. Vinny had a chance to give Wenatchee a district or a league regular season title in his match last week against Sunnyside that we had here on the NCW Life Channel. The match finally went into, I think, the third round before the wrestler for Sunnyside was able to get the pin. No, it was in the second round. That's right. So go forth and Kedrowski. Out there on the mats here at 285 pounds. They drew beforehand. We got a stall warning on both wrestlers. So got to make a move here. Can't just push and shove on the other guy. And kind of a shot by Goforth. Kedrowski has done pretty well this season in uh, tournament matches. 25 seconds left in a scoreless first round. Go forth. Just a push and a push and a push. And Kidrowski looking for a shot and then a counter possibly. Kidrowski reaching up with the left hand and grabbing the back of Go Forth's head. So Go Forth does the same. And that is two bulldozers pushing blades against each other for a round and nobody scoring. <laughs> so here we go to round number two, and it will be Kidrowski down. And go forth. We'll take the up position. Go forth. Trying to break down the hips here of Kidrowski. 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 
And again, you're going to have wrestlers trying to do something. So you don't see that too much from the heavyweights where they throw a leg in. But that's what Goforth did there. Goforth trying to reach back and he doesn't know what to do right now because Kidrowski just kind of four posts of a tent out there. And you got to break hips down if you're going to try to do something. That's the hollering coming from the Wenatchee coaching staff right now. Vinny's got to be careful on top here not to get too high. As Kidrowski, yeah, they're telling him to break him all the way down. Kidrowski, meanwhile, tried to grab that arm and do a roll to the mat. And not much happening here. The officials whistle, whistle out of his mouth momentarily to tell the wrestlers, hey, we got to do something here. People pay good money to get in to watch wrestling. <laughs> 48 seconds left in round number two still scoreless here so we may have a stall warning coming up against somebody go forth just not breaking him down you got to reach back and grab an ankle and then just drive your hips into his hips and break him down now he gave up his leg now Kudrowski Trying to hang on to that leg here and maybe get a, turn, a, a, a reversal with 20 seconds left. Or at least an escape. Get points somehow. Kedrowski getting to his feet. Trying to get himself free with 13, with 12, with 10. Trying to pull and he gets a one point escape. Our first point of the match comes with six seconds left in the second round. So Kedrowski with the lead. <laughs> And that'll be the end of round number two. <laughs> Dad last week joining us here on the broadcast. The, no, it should be 1-0, escape. One point stalling, I didn't know he'd given a stall warning. Well, I guess he'd given a stall warning to both wrestlers. So you get the second stalling, and that's a point. And so the point was against Kid, uh, Kidrowski. And so Goldforth leads it to, no, no, Kidrowski leads it to nothing. There we go. It was a, it was a stalling against Goforth. So Kidrowski leads it to nothing here. As we go to the third round, trying to get Eastbourne a win. Go forth to his feet. Go forth with an escape. It's a 2 1 contest. Go forth and then bangs head to head with Kidrowski. Just trying to push and push. We saw that for the entire first round. Now going to a knee is Go forth. He's got one leg tied up. Now Kidrowski is just trying to get that leg free and get behind him. He reaches back and tried to. Get his leg free and get the cross face in place, and he will get a two-point takedown. Kidrowski leads it 4-1. to one. Minute 12 to go here in the third. In the match, go forth, back to his base. 103 to go. Trails it by three. He needs a reversal or he needs a, an escape and a takedown. He's close to the escape with 52 seconds. And we're going to get a stall warning on the Eastmont wrestler and a one-point escape. But he gave him stall points as well. So it's four to three now. Kedrowski leads it by one and cannot get another stalling or else he'll give up another point to tie it. 30 seconds to go. you got to wrestle here the rest of the way. Either wrestler. 4-3, Kidrowski by one. Shot by Goforth. He's got the leg in deep. 20 seconds to go in the match. Goforth gave up the takedown. Kidrowski with 14 seconds left is probably going to win it. How about that match? Eight seconds to go. Cross face by Kidrowski with three, with two, with one, and Eastmont's going to win it. 6-3 decision as Luke Kidrowski gets the 6-3 win over Vincent Goforth in a battle of seniors here between Eastmont and Wenatchee. Three points going to Eastmont as a team. And now back to our final match at 106 pounds. It's Ryder Whitley 
the freshman for Wenatchee against Jake Schrader, the freshman for Eastbound. Wenatchee is going to win the match. There's no doubt about that. It just depends on final scoring here. After the match, we'll try to grab, since this is our final match of the season here on the NCAA Live Channel, we'll try to see if Evan Burdan will join us on the post game or post-match, if you will. So here we go. This should be interesting. Ryder Whitley for Wenatchee, Jake Schrader for Eastmont. Both freshmen, 106 pounds to wrap up our night here at Eastmont High School. Both wrestlers tie up and looking for a throw. And who's going to get the advantage here? The Wenatchee wrestler, Whitley, has the head and the arm, but it's going to be a two-point takedown here for Schrader. So you don't see the little guys try a head and the arm very often, but that was the attempt here. And now, kind of a sit out by Whitley, almost right into the waiting grasp of Schrader. Schrader trying to keep him down. Minute 20 to go here in round number one. Two nothing, it is Schrader leading Whitley. And now spinning, but Whitley has that tight waist. Now he's got a leg in, looking for a far side cradle possibly. Looks for, oh, and now a reach up by Whitley, and he grabs the arm of Schrader. Now looking for the head. He's got the two-point reversal, and going to get near wall points, possibly. Possibly. But Schrader back on top. He's got a two-point reversal. So 4-2 is the score. He did not give Whitley any near fall points. A wild match here in the first period. Incredible here tonight at Eastmont High School. Now again, the head for Schrader, giving up to Whitley. Two-point reversal and near fall points. He's got the head and arm good here. He's got 24 seconds, but needs to watch his weight. And he's taken back over. Three-point near fall, two-point reversal. Now near fall points going to come for Schrader. Looking for the pin with 13 seconds left in the match. Eastmont fans on their feet. Schrader will get three-point near fall. Check the score. It's 9-7. <laughs> Schrader leading Whitley. Wild first round. Choice will be to Wenatchee. They'll defer, and Schrader will take down here to start round number two. What a wild first round. Flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop. 9-7 the score. This one could finish 20-18. to 18. Sit out by Schrader. Tight waist by Whitley. Schrader trying to reach and grab the arm, the left arm of Whitley and then just crowd him. Whitley trying to oh, bar that arm up of Schrader. But Schrader's actually got his leg over the top of Whitley. Whitley's kind of out of balance here. As Schrader continues to crowd him, he could reach up for that head. Of course, has to watch giving up his own arm in the process. Now Whitley trying for the far side cradle. He's got him locked up. But his arm is around his waist under his, el his armpit rather than around by his head. So he gives up the hold. And now Whitley looking to bar it up again. Schrader, the official, looks like he's talking to, oh, hang on, we got a dangerous hold here. Chicken wing is what they call that, where the arm is barred, but the hand goes up towards the head rather than staying parallel across the back. So that's an illegal goal. A dangerous hold, not an illegal hold, a dangerous hold. So the official stops it. No points awarded either side. 56 seconds left here in round number two. 9-7 still our score. So, so much for all that scoring we saw in the first round. Whitley on top for Wenatchee. Schrader on the bottom for Eastbawn. Again, Whitley gets out a little bit wide, trying to bar that arm up. Always helpful if you break the base down first before you try to bar him the arm up. Now he's got to watch for that chicken wing again. 
as he just doesn't really have it in there very well. Now Schrader has the leg over the top of Whitley's leg. Now they go to their feet, and Schrader's going to get a reversal here. And he will. That makes an 11-7 match. And now an attempt at a Granby roll, but he rolled right into a hold here and going to get near fall points. Four seconds left in the round. Whitley back up to his base and a three-point near fall. Going to make it a 14-7 match. Jake Schrader leading Ryder Whitley. But I'll remind you, last week in the 106-pound match, Ryder Whitley was trailing Desmond Martinez of Sunnyside in the third round and suddenly came up with a pin. So the match not over until the whistle sounds or the buzzer sounds here at Eastmont High School. Whitley on the bottom here to start this next round. Schrader on top. Schrader leading the match 14 to 7. Whitley trying to crowd, trying to crowd. If he reaches back for the half Nelson, he'll get a reversal and some near fall points possibly. And they do give him the reversal. So it's 14 to 9. Schrader standing up. Whitley trying to throw him. Schrader spinning, going to get the reversal. Good idea, just didn't have positioning right. Did Ryder Whitley. 16 to 9. Schrader on top. What did I say that final score was going to be? <laughs> Now, grabbing a leg is Whitley. Schrader's a little bit too high, trying to go for a power Nelson here, but he's got the leg in, but now watch out. He could get shucked by, and now reaching for the head. He's got the leg. Look out, and he tips him over towards his back. 46 seconds left. Two-point reversal and near fall points. Whitley. Trying to come from behind two weeks in a row. He trails at 16-11, but he's got near fall points coming. Two so far. Two point near fall. Now we'll cover. It's 16-13 with 25 seconds left. He's got the half in, but doesn't have him broken down. 18 seconds remaining. Schrader led it until just moments ago. He still leads it by three. But Whitley trying to do all he can with five seconds left in the round, in the match, in the season here in the regular season. That's it. 16, 13, Jake Schrader with the win over Ryder Whitley. What a battle of freshmen that are going to be fantastic down the road for both of these clubs. 51, 23, is your final. We'll try to grab uh, Evan Burdan and talk to him here on the postgame coming up after this on the NCAW Life Channel. We were in Roseburg in the early 80s. Our oldest son, Dan, was a defensive back, a starter on that team. They set, in fact, became Oregon State champions, setting the first undefeated 14-0 season in Oregon's history. And a lot of people were losing jobs. Friends had left the community. It was a hard time. That football team and companies like Abby's kept that place alive and the community spirit alive. That's legendary. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. I'm Brian Thorpe, and I'm proud to say that Global Car Care is growing. We always do the right thing, and because of that, we're busy. And it's time to hire an experienced automotive technician. We spend as much time with our coworkers as we do our own family. 
I want them to understand they're not a number here. They're a person with a family, and I want them to be part of this family too. Do you want an owner that understands and respects what you do every day? I'm that guy. Our compensation is the best in the area. I want you to have your career with us. Welcome back here on the post game or post match show, I should say, on the NCW Life Channel. Now visiting with Evan Verdan, who gets the win by pin in the third round. You say you're not feeling the best tonight? Uh, no, I don't know what it is, but I've had something since one of the last few tournaments, and it's kind of just stuck with me. Well, hopefully you can shake that by the district tournament coming up in a couple of weekends. Uh, I know you're not used to going three rounds. Talk about this matchup with Ricky, and and he, he he's quite a wrestler. I mean, he's ranked 10th, you're ranked second in the state at 195 pounds. Yeah, he's a tough kid, and him only being a sophomore shows his talent, shows his hard work, and can't wait to wrestle in the districts. That was quite a match last week with Sunnyside and came right down to the final match. It was fun to watch and fun to call on television. Talk about this team and, and how you guys think you're set up for getting into the district tournament and getting eventually to Mac Classic. Um, I think with just a few more good practices this week and a little bit more conditioning, we can catch up to Sunnyside and districts, take districts from them, and go into regional strong at the first or second team heading into Head in the state. This is this is the time of year where injuries and illnesses you talked about. I mean, you got to try to be healthy as you can. How do you balance that with also needing to stay fresh on the mat? Um, I mean, I know talking from experience that sometimes you you can't really best your injury or your illness, and you kind of have to wrestle through it. I'm hoping not to have to do that. I know some of these guys on the team aren't hoping to have to do that, but sometimes you just got to take a day or two off, try to get better, and catch up on that conditioning. So last year, uh, third place finish at state for you. So 195, 220. Where where is your weight? Uh, this year I'm going to be wrestling at 195. Okay. All right. Now is that strategic because you think you might have a better chance or what? Uh, no, we did it just for the just for the Sunnyside duel. We thought that maybe okay. me cutting down and having me and Jack at separate weights yeah. would be able to kind of even out our match with Sunnyside, and it kind of showed that. You and Jack wrestle each other during practice and stuff. Yes, sir. So that's got to be pretty fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, Evan, best of luck. I uh, hope you're feeling better, and uh, go get it at districts and regionals and at state. Thank you. You bet. Evan Berdan joining us here on the post game. We'll come back and uh, wrap it up here from East Bond High School where the Wildcats uh, fall to the Wenatchee Panthers here by a final of 51-23. to 23. We're back after this. Thanks to Les Schwab tires. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember... Breathe in. Now watch your speed and breathe out. Good. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. I believe we've been coming to Abby's for 56 years, isn't it? Yes, yeah. 56 years. Remembering all the events as a family and a community that we spent at Abby's. E excellent and delicious food at an affordable price. We're delighted that we live close enough to be able to be a frequent customer. And we are. And we are. <laughs> In fact, we've got orders to bring home a, a giant pizza when we leave okay. here tonight. <laughs> One more time around here at East Ball High School where the Wenatchee Panthers come in and knock off the East Ball Wildcats by that score of 51 to 23. Uh, Panthers end up with uh, four pins on the night and get ready for the districts coming up a couple of Saturdays from now down at Davis High School. We're going to have some great representation between Eastmont and Wenatchee from the Valley coming into the postseason. So it'll be fun to watch these wrestlers and we'll report on their successes here on the NCW Life Channel. For our crew tonight, Grant Olson back up on upper camera. We have Josiah Davison, our line producer here, back in the studios, uh, Malcolm Whitehall along with Matthew Moore. And of course, the best one. Marion Granstrom behind camera number two here on the mat. I'm Eric Granstrom. That's going to wrap it up for wrestling here tonight where Wenatchee knocks off Eastmont in the final Big Nine match of the regular season. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching tonight's live coverage of local high school sports on the NCW Live Channel, your local TV station. Tonight's broadcast has been brought to you by Abby's Pizza, Biosports Physical Therapy, Clean Connection, Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, 
Save Mart, Together for You, and TC Slingers. This has been a special presentation of NCW Life Channel Sports. We now return you to normal programming already in progress. Take down and maybe some near fall points coming up for Brad.